Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about volcanic activity on the planet Venus. Now, volcanic activity is always a very interesting topic. If we talk about a moon or we talk about a planet, it doesn't matter. But especially for the planet Venus, because we think that something very different is going on on the planet Venus compared to any other planet or any other moon in the solar system. So, how do we know that? And what is that mysterious thing that may be going on from a volcanic perspective? Well, let's first review what we know for sure, because, well, everything that we surmise or all the things that we think might be happening on Venus is usually based upon what we've observed. And, and so the, the difficult part is take what we observe and know and turn that into a theory that seems to make sense. And as we then find new information, either the theory holds up or the theory breaks down and we have to come up with a new theory. But some years ago, somebody came up with a very interesting theory and I believe that that one seems to be sticking. So what do we know for sure? What have we observed? Well, first of all, what is extremely unique about Venus, and if we take a look at this picture, this is kind of a, a, global, a global picture of the surface of Venus. This is a massive scale. This is definitely the North Pole and the South Pole. It goes almost all the way from east to west, not quite because the picture is somewhat limited, but it does show a very large portion of the surface of Venus. And what we see here, those lighter regions right here, those are all lava flows. Just think of the enormous size. Think of it, in, if you think of North America being about this big and maybe Europe being about this big, notice the vast size of those lava flows. That is something that we have never seen on any other object, not even, not even the moon Io, where we know there's always massive volcanic activity. We don't see something at this global scale. These lava flows are many, many thousands of kilometers or many thousands of miles in size and they spread out over enormous areas. And so what has happened to cause something like that? So that's very unique. So keep that in mind. We're going to look at some of the other discoveries that we've made and other assumptions that we can make and then we'll try to figure out what seems to be the most plausible answer as to what happens volcanically on the planet. So let's take, make some room here. All right, so first of all, what do we know? Well, we have meteor craters on the surface of Venus. There's almost a thousand of them, and they're all fairly large in size because there's no small impact craters on, uh, on Venus because small impacts, simply the small meteors, simply do not survive the trip through that very heavy, dense atmosphere. So the fact that there's almost a thousand of them is quite amazing. But the fact that there's not more of them is even more amazing. Based upon the number of craters and the condition that they're in, because after all, about 85% of them appear very pristine, appear that they haven't been changed, there hasn't been enough impact craters or volcanic activity to, to raise those, those craters. They all look like they perhaps happened yesterday. So if we couple those two together, it would then indicate that the entire surface of Venus, and this is really important, the entire surface of Venus appears to be about 300 to 600 million years old. What's so different about that is that when we look at the Earth, for example, we find craters that happened billions of years ago, and, and we can see that they're billions of years old, and then we have craters that are only 100,000 years old, or 50 million or 100 million. We can tell that different parts of the surface of the Earth have different ages. That doesn't seem to be the case on Venus. So the whole surface looks like it's about the same age and that age is somewhere between 316 million years old based upon the number of craters that we find. In addition to that, we know that there's no tectonic plate movement on Venus. In other words, the Earth has like 16 large tectonic plates that are constantly moving. Some are being subducted underneath others. They disappear. So any surface features will simply disappear because of that. We don't see that happening on Venus. So there's simply a single crust with no tectonic plate movement, which is part of the reason why the entire surface appears to be about the same age. Coupled with knowing that there are massive lava flows, just like we saw in the picture, across huge regions of the surface. And we're talking about absolutely enormous in size. Hmm. 
And then when we try to figure out if there's current activity, current volcanic activity, there are indications there are, but only on a very small scale and there's indirect information. In other words, we haven't never seen a picture where a volcano is currently active, or we haven't seen a case where we saw a region where there was no volcanic activity, and then we came back some years later, took a picture of the same region, of course with radar technology, and then saw that there was some change there indicating, yes, there was a recent activity. We don't have any direct evidence like that. But what we do know, that when we take sub subsequent readings of the atmosphere, we see local large fluctuations in the concentration of sulfur dioxide and methane, which may be the indication that there were some local volcanic events that spewed forth methane and, and, sulfur, and uh, sulfur dioxide, and so therefore the concentration would then increase in that local area. We'd come back some months or years later, take new readings, and then we would see that those concentrations had drastically dropped. So that would be an indirect indication that there was perhaps volcanic activity in a local area. Also, when we take infrared readings, we, we find indication that there's occasional hotspots, regions on the surface that appear to be higher in temperature from the normal uh, in, in centigrade degrees, 460 degrees centigrade, that could be as high as 700, 800, 900, 1000 degrees centigrade. And again, that might be an indication that there was a local volcanic eruption, some molten lava came to the surface, that region would then be hotter for a short period of time until it cools down, and so we feel that maybe we have seen some of those things. Again, no direct evidence, but indication that could be from, from an occasional uh, volcanic eruption. Also, there's a lot of lightning in the atmosphere. Uh, estimated to be about 10 strikes per second, which is comparable to what we see on the Earth, across the Earth, and Typically, lightning in the atmosphere has an is an indication that there's atmospheric dust, and typically that atmospheric dust comes from outgassing, comes from volcanic eruptions. So again, the frequency of lightning strikes may be an indirect reason or an indirect indication that there might be volcanic activity. And then, we know that there's a very high concentration of sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide, and again, those kind of things, those kind of indications would again indicate there might be volcanic activity because usually the source of sulfuric acid or at least the sources that cause sulfuric acid to be made in the atmosphere is usually from outgassing of, of uh, craters or volcanic activity. So we have a lot of indirect evidence that there may be some local activity, some occasional activity of volcanic activity, but we also have very strong evidence that there was maybe some massive planet-wide event that happened some 300 and 600 million years ago. So then we couple that with some additional information. We know when we look at the Earth that the Earth has constant volcanic activity, especially along the edges where tectonic plates come together. That volcanic activity has a very special purpose, not that they were created for that reason per se, but they do something that's very important. They allow the interior heat of the Earth to escape. Every time there's volcanic activity and hot lava comes to the surface, it takes the heat from that hot molten rock and then exposes the space and the heat disappears. Where is that heat coming from? Well, a big portion of the heat generated in the interior of the Earth comes from nuclear decay. We have a lot of nuclear material inside the crust that decays over time. That decay causes an enormous amount of heat to exist, which is part of the reason why the Earth's interior is still molten. And through the volcanic activity that happens on a regular basis, every year, multitude of volcanoes erupt in different places in the Earth. Because of that, heat is constantly escaping along the fracture lines, even in, in the, underneath uh, the oceans, where, for example, in the Atlantic Ocean, where the tectonic plates are moving, where they're separating from one another, lava is flowing to the top, being exposed to the water, cooling down. So there's this continuous heat exhaust from the Earth. We don't have that on Venus. Venus doesn't have tectonic plates, and if there's not a regular eruption of volcanic activity, then the heat that's generated in the very same way in Venus, where we have that nuclear material, that heat can't escape and builds up in the interior. As it builds up and builds up, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, and of course, when things get hotter, they tend to expand. When things expand, they cause it causes more pressure, and when there's more pressure, well, eventually, you get to the point 
where you reach a point where the crust can no longer contain that expanding interior material because of the heating. And when that happens, the expectation is that the whole planet just basically cracks open like an egg, cracks in different places, and massive quantities of lava begin to flow to the top. And that's what we think probably happened to Venus about 300 to 600 million years ago. That all of a sudden, the crust could no longer contain that enormous pressure from the interior, that heat buildup. The planet just cracked open and huge quantities of lava must have flowed to the surface probably for tens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, just erupting and erupting and until finally the pressure subsides, enough heat escaped, things began to collapse down again, things began to harden at the surface, with the lack of pressure on the interior, the formation of lava would begin to slow down and stop, and everything would refreeze and go back to normal. So we believe that that was a massive planet-wide event, and we think that that's something that might happen every once in a while. When we talk about every once in a while, every two, three, four, five hundred million years, who knows? But we think that this may be a continual cycle that will happen again and again and again, as long as sufficient heat is generated in the interior from the nuclear decay of the radioactive elements inside the planet. So that's what we think happened. Internal heat generated by nuclear decay can escape, no tectonic plates, trapped heat increases, increase in the pressure, eventually a threshold is reached, the planet cracks open, massive volcanic activity, and of course, when you look at the pictures, it is easy to see that that would indeed be the case. There you go, massive volcanic activity across the entire surface of the planet. Then eventually, things begin to slow down, it cools the interior, things become dormant, and they settle back in. And now the entire surface has been resurfaced, the vast majority of the impact craters have now been wiped out, been filled with lava, they simply disappear, and the whole process begins again as new meteor craters or impact craters begin to form. Maybe hundreds of millions of years from now, people will look at Venus and say, hey, look at that. The surface appears to be about 300 to 600 million years old. Wonder when the next big eruption will occur. I don't know if people will be around that long from now, but it's the thought. But that's probably the way it happens on the surface of Venus.